Hello viewers, today we're going to do a video about this BMW E39 back there. From time to time people are coming in my shop and, ask, and asking me Grunk, what we're going to need to do to make our engines reliable? I'm going to show you most of the time what you're going to need to do. In this case it's going to be about this engine, but most of the time is this going to come in hand for most of the BMW 6 cylinder engines and not only for the V8s and so on. So pretty much let me show you shortly where we at. So here we have the famous M54 six cylinder BMW engine. Yeah, it's getting old. I know it's 20 years old engine, but still we are working on them and uh, they are so reliable that people are loving them and uh, continue using them. So as we can see, I have removed everything the timing chain cover the timing chains everything because this car is going to receive a new timing chain kit so let me show you what we have in, on the table so as we can see for most of you guys that have worked on these cars going to recognize these labels and this means that we're going to install a lot of OEM parts on this M54 engine. This car is going to receive a proper servicing. And yeah guys, believe me, this is not happening very often. So owner decided to talk with me and ask me what's a good idea to be changed on this engine when we're doing the timing change job. Uh, and I'm going to show you what is the most common problems on these engines. And yeah, I actually already have a full detailed video about rebuilding M54 engine. I'm going to include, include some of the videos uh, in the description below. Uh, but I'm going to show you briefly uh, the most common issues with this M54 engines. I'm going to show you what we're going to install so to increase the, the longevity of this engine and of course the reliability. So let me open up everything and I'm going to show you what we have here. Okay, pretty much everything is out. So let's start with the timing components. As we can see, we're going to change the three timing chains. So this should be the oil pump chain. This should be the, actually this should be the main timing chain, which goes from the crankshaft to the camshaft. And this chain should be for the vano system. Or with other words, it's connecting the both camshafts. This is the main timing chain tensioner. Here we have the crankshaft gear and we're going to say why you are changing this uh, but yeah guys during the years I have seen this crankshaft gears to fail I have seen on some of them these teeth to go bad and the timing chain to skip a tooth so I have seen this to fail and that's why now we're going to change it and as we can see actually these crankshaft gears have some rubber on them and during the years this rubber starts to crack I am recommending when we are doing a timing change up this to be changed. The owner is going to decide is he going to replace it or not. I'm just giving my advices. And in this case, with this car, the owner decided that he wants to change this. If it was me, I was going to change it too. So this is the once again one of this is one of the timing chain guides. This is the upper timing chain. This is actually for the bootcamp shaft tensioner. Yeah, this is kind of pricey, but uh, it's OEM. So this is the other two main timing chain guides, which are guiding the main timing chain. And yeah, we're going to change the crankshaft bolt. So this engines has only one crankshaft bolt and uh, it's crazy tight, uh, but it's always recommended to change this bolt. And actually this boat is not so cheap, I believe it was something around 30 euros, something like that, because it's OEM one. So yeah, it's good that the owner decided to change this. If we go along, we're going to see the crankcase ventilation system. And probably most of you guys which are having these engines are going to recognize this. Because from time to time, most of the time, not from time to time, this system fails. Most of the time is because of these holes, which cracks, or because of this one, they crack and the engine starts to suck some parasitic air and going to cause some lean coats on the ECU. 
So it's highly recommend this kit here with the four hoses and the, especially the, the all gas separator to be changed in my opinion on between 60 or 80 thousand kilometers. If it was me I was going to change it on every 60 thousand kilometers. Uh, most of the time people are changing some stuff when it fails but uh, yeah, I prefer to do it preventively everybody can decide for themselves. Actually these three bolts are for the camshaft gear. We bought three new bolts for the camshaft gear. Uh, what else? We have two rings here. One of it is for the oil dipstick and the other is for the oil suction pipe. I'm going to show you in the second. These two o-rings, they are actually the same part number, but uh, these o-rings are going to be installed. Let me show you. It's going to be installed here. As we can see, we have two o-rings here. And here, at this point, the timing chain cover is installed and it goes here on, on this. Let, let me show you the timing chain cover. Let me find it. This is the timing chain cover and the hose goes right here. So if you don't change these o-rings, most of my colleagues are putting some silicone sealant here, RTV, uh, so to prevent from leaking, but <laughs> yeah, it's a really bad idea. And it's always risky with this plastic hose here because most of the time it breaks down when you are removing the timing chain cover. But uh, in this case we were lucky and it didn't break down. We're just going to change the o-rings and we're going to cross our fingers that when we're re reinstalling the timing chain cover it's not going to break down. The same comes for this hose here. When you're removing, the, removing it, most of the time it breaks down. For now <laughs> it stays strong, so we're going to leave it like that. Uh, and the other o-ring which I, I was talking about, this is the oil suction pipe o-ring which you're going to want to change, which goes here behind the oil pump. And as you can see guys, I have removed the whole oil, oil pump assembly. I didn't want to touch this nut here for the gear of the oil pump because probably many of you are going to know with the issue with this nut. I don't want to touch this nut, that's why I always prefer to remove the whole oil pump housing. Why the owner decided to go with OEM parts for the PCV system? Because believe me guys, I have tried all the aftermarket junk which are out there and I can tell you for sure that they don't work in the long term. I know this here, these four hoses and the oil separator it's really pricey but if you want your car to be reliable this is the only way to go let's continue along this gasket once again most of you probably going to know where this comes from let me show you this is really really common issues on these engines or i cannot call it issue actually is because nobody is changing this gasket and it sits right here where the oil filter housing sits as you can see we have removed it, we have cleaned it up and pretty much we're going to change the gasket here because 99% of the time when a car like this came in our shop with this engine M54, M52, M50 doesn't matter this gasket is leaking badly and the whole engine looks disgusting so that's why we are going to change this gasket Let's continue along. This is just the crankshaft seal, which is a must to be changed. This is for the oil, oil level sensor. This here, as, as I told you, this is for the coolant pipe. This is for the vanus unit and this is for the timing chain cover. Yeah, we decided to buy a OEM gasket for the timing chain cover. These are OEM ones, they are not so expensive. Yeah, we decided to change the water pump. It's not OEM one, but it's a high quality HEPO hip water pump which are really reliable and uh, really rarely this fails so yeah probably one out of 100 fails so it's really low percentage so pretty much as we can see guys this is the things you're going to want to do on your engine except one more thing which the owner decided to leave for a later state is servicing of the vanus unit as you know guys, from time to time this seals inside the vanus fails and uh, you're going to want to replace it but the owner decided to leave it for a later state. Just want to say a few words about this. You're going to want to change this 
In total, four O-rings inside the chambers here. Uh, pretty much these actuators for the valves never failed. Most of the time they, they failed because the wires are, are shorting itself and uh, if you short these wires, most of the time this actuator is going to fail. Uh, but other than that, everything is okay. The other really common issue with these engines is this valve cover, uh, which cracks most of the time and starts leaking. No matter how many gaskets you're going to change, it's still going to leak because uh, when the plastic breaks down, you cannot do anything and that's why the owner decided to buy it. Uh, yeah, here's the open, which we have cleaned. And the owner decided to take uh, other valve cover. Yeah, it's not M56, <laughs> which most of you want, but they are really expensive. And that's why the owner decided to buy, a, let's say, new valve cover. And yeah guys, this is the most common things you want, you're going to want to do on this M54 engines. These are the things which are crucial, which you're going to want to change. Yeah, probably these two plastic hoses, it's a good idea to change them from time to time. As I told you, they are plastic and they get really brittle uh, in a long term. For now, I think they're going to hold, hopefully, but if they fail, you're going to need to remove the intake manifold so to be able to replace them. So you're going to say to you, these petrol engines, their timing chains never fails. But believe me guys, I have seen a snap timing chain on these engines. Uh, and you're going to say, how is this possible? But we, we are talking about this for 10 years. For, for, from a 10 years, people are saying, this timing chains never fails. In the years and the mileage which these cars are seeing, believe me, the things are changing. Maybe we have talked before 10 years that this timing chains never fails, but uh, during the years, little by little, this happens. It's not going to continue forever that these timing chains are going to last 50 years. After some time, you guys are going to see that these engines are going to start getting this issue with the snap timing chains. I personally going to change my timing chain on my M52 engine. Uh, because I have seen what can happen, but everyone has their opinion. The car is theirs, they can decide by themselves. I actually forget something. I now saw it. Let's don't forget about this hose here, which is the most common issue on these cars. <laughs> I have never seen M52, M54 engine without this valve hose leaking down. All of them are leaking. And once again, the owner decided to buy a OEM hose Genian for, from BMW for the valves. And just decided to show you the difference in the both crankshaft gears. Actually, I have seen much, much more worse looking crankshaft gears from this one. I have seen with missing rubber from the gear. I believe BMW have decided to put this rubber here because it's making the chain, the timing chain, the assembly of the timing chain much more quieter. And thus we can see the old one with the marks of the chain, especially the square marks. So yeah, just want to show the difference. Just wanted to record this video for a brief explanation, which is the most common issues on this engine. The other things which can uh, include in the video, if you have issues with the camshaft or the crankshaft sensors, you're going to need to use only OEM ones. If you put some aftermarket ones, you're going to have some issue. So you're going to need to go only with genuine ones. I know they are expensive, but uh, if you want your car once again to be reliable, this is the only way to go. So, okay guys, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.